Hey everyone, good afternoon. Um, so as Donna mentioned, my name is Justin Sakovitz. I'm an account manager here at Atlantic Data Security. Uh, and for those of you who aren't too familiar with our business model, uh, we're a full service cybersecurity value added reseller and integrator. Uh, we have customers spanning all the way up from Maine down to Florida. Uh, and you know, I'd say our customers really range from small to medium to, to enterprise organizations. I myself have, have customers that have 50 employees all the way up to 35,000. So the point in that is, is we understand the different challenges you all face, regardless of the industry, regardless of, of you know, whatever those challenges might be, whether you're a technology customer, healthcare, retail, financial services, whether it be compliance, regulation, dealing with internal issues, dealing with upper management, or if you are upper management, dealing with your stakeholders in, in your board. So we, as your, your trusted advisor, really try to understand your concerns and make the best recommendation possible for, for the business. So in saying that, regardless, again, of what size your organization might be, or again, what industry that you're in, there's really two themes that we constantly hear from our customers. Uh, it's that there are not enough hours in the day, right? We all know that. And uh, that there just aren't enough good resources out there, right? It's, it's like good pitching in baseball. You can't have enough of it. So that's where the relationship with Atlantic and Arctic Wolf really comes in, right? It's, you know, addressing these challenges that, that Arctic Wolf can, can, can help with, solving the business solutions by, by helping sort of being your primary uh, in, in, in secondary context to help as, as an extension of the IT team, uh, having the skills to remotely hunt down these threats and, and recommend a, a good response action when, when something might happen at two o'clock in the morning that the team can't focus on. So, uh, and then of course, also to act alongside Atlantic uh, as a partnership between you, between ADS and Antarctic Wolf to provide those, those you know, security strategic insights to better bolster the overall program. So, uh, it's a relationship that we're really excited about. Uh, it's somewhat somewhat newer, but we're already seeing um, you know some some great results. And again, we're we're just uh, excited for this, and hopefully, you guys get a lot out of it. Uh, in saying that, I will turn it over to my man, man Todd Mallet, who's going to uh, take a deeper dive into the solution. So enjoy and enjoy the uh, adult lemonades, everyone. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Todd Mallet. Like uh, Justin said, he and I have worked together in the past, so. Uh appreciate the intro buddy so i'm one of the engineers over here i cover the northern new england patch uh maine new hampshire vermont the non-boston half of massachusetts very broad team though in in the new england region and of course you know across the entire country um and my counterpart here who's actually going to be helping with the deck as well uh andrew king i'll let him kind of do a little intro too yeah guys pleasure to meet everyone and thanks for making some time so um todd and i will be going through some content um, we won't kill you with slides. It's only like 105 slides, so we'll fly right through it. Um, I'm only kidding. Um, but really what we're going to get into is, is sort of what we're seeing in terms of the security threat landscape today. Um, and then we'll obviously get into, you know, how Arctic Wolf is, is sort of attacking that, right, and assisting customers alongside our partner ADS. Um, so with that, um, Todd, let's get right into it if you want to hit the first slide for me. Got animations, buddy. There you go. All built. No, you can build this one all the way out, man. So, guys, really where the conversation starts for us is this idea that cybersecurity has what we call an effectiveness problem. Right? There's a lot of great technology. There's a lot of great tools out there. And there's also a lot of money being spent within cybersecurity, right? And still, with so much money being spent on tools and so many good tools and, and products at our disposal, we're still seeing about 3,000 reported breaches a year, right? And what I find, you know, extremely staggering here is 80% of security leaders believe they're still falling short with their cybersecurity strategy as it exists today. Um, so Todd, if you hit the next one for me, we'll dig into it a little bit more. And guys, these are just observations that, that we're seeing right across the industry. 59% of organizations breached yearly, right? 40 days in terms of an increase patch critical vulnerabilities, right? But what's really important here is the $8.6 million in terms of average cost of a data breach, right? Huge amount of money, right? And even more staggering than that is the 206 days it's taking an average customer to actually detect what's going on and put a plan in place to get back to that known good state. And Todd, you can hit the next one. It's going to be the rough one, buddy. Here we go. Let's give it a go. A lot of animations. 
Um, so again, guys, kind of building off, you know, what we're seeing in terms of average costs for something like ransomware, right? Ransomware has cost businesses in 2020 over $18 billion, right? And if you look at 2019, we saw a 74% increase and then a crazy jump to about a 485% increase in 2020. Um, yeah, perfect, Todd. You can build it one more time for me. Perfect. And if we look at something like business email compromises, right? This is something that, you know, comes up in conversations with Todd and I almost weekly with customers, right? Huge cost associated with the impact of a business email compromise at about $1.8 billion in 2020, right? Look at 65% of businesses faced business email compromise in 2020, right? And obviously, you know, moving into 2021, we expect those numbers to continue to increase, right? We talked about the 206 days in terms of actually detecting and putting a plan in place to get back to a known good state. Right. Again, 485% increase in ransomware in 2020. That's massive. Todd, let's build it one more time. Yep. Perfect. Um, and, and what are the bad guys demanding? Right. It's almost 90% of the time money. Right. It's payment, whether it's crypto, um, PayPal, whatever it is. Right. Beyond that, there's additional costs and implications with decrypting data. Right. And if you build it one more time for me, Todd, I think we'll get there. Right. And then even scarier, right, is preventing data from being posted publicly. Right. Um, and what we're seeing, and I find this extremely interesting, is the emergence of ransomware as a service. Right. So these are people going to a third party and hiring um, basically ransomware as a service. Right. So this continues to change daily. And it's, it's something that we're really keeping an eye on. And Todd, I know that's a lot of info there. I, I just wanted to have you jump in if there was anything I missed here in terms of current threat landscape. Yeah, the, the ransomware as a service, I think you kind of pinpointed what the biggest concern here is. You don't even need to be all that smart anymore to do this. You don't need to code or develop the ransomware attacks themselves. You're going to someone, you're buying their ransomware, you're deploying it, and you give them a stipend or a percentage of whatever it is that you rake in. Um, amazing ramifications for the companies that are facing this, you know, from a reputational status as well as a monetary, uh, you know, problem. It's, it's, it's a really big deal. We're seeing a lot of this. And again, it's this ransomware as a service thing. It's, uh, it's fairly interesting and, and, uh, and pretty damning at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Todd, if you hit the next one, I think we'll get into, again, some pretty scary stuff right in time for the uh, spooky Halloween season. But what we're looking at here guys, and this is, again, pretty crazy information. This is a company that's critical information has been put on the dark web, right? So this is available for anyone that's, you know, willing to take the risk to jump on the dark web, right? So we're looking at, I think it looks like some building plans, et cetera, et cetera. So some pretty sensitive data that's widely available for people that are willing to jump on the dark web. Um, and Todd, I'll have you just go to the next one quick. This one kind of speaks for itself, right? We're looking at passport information on the dark web. That's horrifying to me. Um, and again, it's, it's really goes to say that this stuff is out there, right? And we really need to understand the ramifications of critical data being leaked and, and being placed on a, you know, environment like the dark web. Um, one more I have here, Todd. Yep, again, this is kind of, you know, icing on the cake. These are videos on the dark web from a Florida, I think it's Dade City, Florida, a prison. Um, so these are videos of cells in a prison. So this stuff's out there, it's scary. Um, and again, this is why we need to be very laser focused on the strategy as it results to cybersecurity going forward. Um, Todd, I think I'm gonna have you, I'll, I'll take this one and then I'll pass it over. but. Again, guys, when we're looking at dark web data leaks, right, 90% of these critical information, medical records, government resources, financial records, right? We just saw passports. So again, something very, very critical that, that needs to be talked about and, you know, strategies need to be put in place. And Todd, I think I will have you hit the next one and uh, kind of take it from there. So in the I think one of the, the most interesting things for me, you know, when I started getting more into this, obviously, since joining Arctic Wolf, 
is how easy this stuff is to access. You just simply download Tor browser, which is literally like Google Chrome. You jump on a, a wiki site to look for onions and that's it. And all of those files that you just saw Andrew kind of talk through, you can find those in 30 seconds. So the information is very public. We call it the deep web, but it really just needs a different web browser to be viewed. So again, that information uh, that is being posted from companies and oftentimes just in snippets, right? Depending on, okay, you didn't pay in seven days, here's half of your data that we've now leaked. And then, you know, they just keep progressing that and, and upping the charge, et cetera. But this data, although I think a lot of people think it's difficult to obtain, it's right there. It's very, very simple to find. Um, and again, oftentimes it is full data dumps from an entire customer's everything. Um, so so these, these individuals that are doing this for money have no shame. <laughs> so nothing is safe. And that includes all of our own personal records as well. I mean, obviously the companies that we work for have a ton of our information as well. So there's, there's individual ramifications here above and beyond that of just individual businesses. Some of the industries that we're hitting, and guys, this is a universal problem, but we've seen a huge uptick in manufacturing government uh, in 2020 for percentages of targeted ransomware. Um, but there is no safe industry here. Um, I live in the woods in southwestern New Hampshire and a town, uh, two towns over from myself actually, was just taken for $2.1 million as a result of a business email compromise, which led to changing numbers on an ACH payment. Because it's government, they have to post, you know, who won a contract for something. So it was immediately known that they had a contract that they were awarding for $2.1 million dollars the attackers actually infiltrated the construction company, which had next to no security, and basically spoofed email addresses, changed one digit in an ACH, and got $2.1 million richer. Um, so these things are not isolated to large companies. Um, more often than not, we're seeing a lot of smaller companies being targeted because, frankly, it's easier to infiltrate those smaller companies than it is you know, the, the gigantic you know, Fortune 500. So here's how we help. First and foremost, if you become an Arctic Wolf customer, we assign a pair of individuals to your account. We call them concierge security team members, and they are a static resource. They don't change. So in other words, you get to learn them. They get to learn you. They intimately understand your environment. And as corny as it sounds, they legitimately act as an extension of your IT team as it relates to security. These individuals are humans. They are real. And they work with you day in, day out, customizing the Arctic Wolf platform, making sure you're getting out of it exactly what it is that you want to get out customizing alerts, developing playbooks, adjusting SLAs based on maybe when you wanna be woken up at, at 3 a.m. on a Saturday, those types of things. But then also working with you to develop custom reports that adhere to any form of compliance that you may have to, to prove for. You can leverage that with your auditors or compliance officers, et cetera. Um, and then most importantly, they're the ones that are bringing to you the incident or the alert. And we do it in a human way. We call, text, or email rather than just flipping an alert over to some security email inbox. And then we explain it to you again in a human way, what the threat was, exactly what it proliferated within your environment. And most importantly, we'll have a guided remediation plan already prepared and we'll work with you guys through that remediation to make sure that the environment is shored up, your security posture is at a high level again. And then after the fact, roll through a root cause analysis, understand how this happened and offer strategic guidance back to our customers as to how this can be prevented down the road from, from happening at that particular vector that was originally leveraged. So a very human experience with Arctic Wolf. We do truly view this as a, as a partnership rather than just somebody selling you a widget. The platform itself allows us to do this. Um, we develop this platform on our own. This is our own people, our own process. We leverage our own SIM tool under the covers, which we created. We have our own threat intelligence, but also around a dozen additional threat feeds. So we're casting a very wide net against what we're finding out there. Um, and because it's our own IP, it means we're beholden to no one. We can do anything we want to this platform, improving it on our own, of course, which we do all the time, but also taking customer feedback, doing those custom rule sets, uh, developing the SLAs, like I said, on a customer by customer basis, despite the fact that we're, we're very multi-tenant, obviously. Another large part of Arctic Wolf is that we take a very agnostic approach to the type of customer that we're onboarding into the platform. It's very much a come as you are from a product standpoint. We want to leverage investments that you guys have already made in your security stack and use them as additional points of telemetry in doing what we do and making it better. Security is kind of the one space left, I think, in, in IT at least, where more is more. 
So the more info we can get, the better from you guys. And if that means, you know, hooking in via APIs and other partnerships slash integrations we have with the likes of CrowdStrike or Carbon Blap, Mimecast, uh, Okta, Duo, you name it. It's a very, very long list of integrations that we have. We use that, again, like I said, as additional points of telemetry in doing what we do. And most importantly, being able to correlate incidents against your entire environment rather than focusing on an individual facet like what we'd see with a, you know, a pure EDR type product, which is only focusing on your endpoints. We're looking at your network, we're looking at your endpoints, we're looking at your cloud, and we can correlate all that information against each other for any given incident to truly understand um, its, its level of proliferation within your environment. So now we'll kind of get into what, what we're solving for. You know, these are the leading causes of a breach that we're seeing out there right now. Um, the first one's remote infiltration. I mean, so poorly secured ports and services. Of course, we're scanning for those 24-7. Weak password management. We're assisting our customers in, in that by aligning to the CIS top 20, which directly relates itself back to password management, but also any other framework you want to think about, be it NIST or something else. Um, and for this, we're using a platform, one of our offerings called Managed Detection and Response, or MDR, probably an acronym you're familiar with. This is very much the reactive side of what we do, where we're ingesting all of the logs across your entire environment, running them through our platform, doing threat hunting, all of those things. And then in the event of an actual threat, assisting our customers in, in whatever those remediation tactics need to be to, uh, to expunge said threat. Fun fact is that 70% of the time when we bring a new customer into the Arctic Wolf platform, we immediately find latent threats within their environment. And that number is very scary because there is no customer we onboard that has zero security products. So this number just really goes back and reaffirms that very first slide that Andrew showed, which is that we have an effectiveness problem in how we're leveraging our tools. Individual point products, individual panes of glass, a complete lack of correlation amongst all of those different tools. And that's one of the things that we're certainly solving against. Next, we see software vulnerabilities. This, this is a big deal with security. And I think oftentimes it gets somewhat overlooked or it gets a little bit under leveraged as far as what we see out there for, for customers doing for vulnerability management. Maybe they're running a six month pen test. You get a, a list of things that you need to fix, but it's really just a snapshot in time. It's not, it's not doing those scans continuously so you understand new threats and emerging threats and vulnerabilities. Our platform for this that addresses it is called Manage Risk, and this is continuous internal, external, host-based, and web-based vulnerability assessments 24 hours a day. So more of a security camera versus a snapshot. And this is helping our customers proactively uh, make their environment more secure and harder to infiltrate in, in the first place. And that's how we can cut down a lot of the threats that we actually see. It's by creating a better security posture for our customers, and Manage Risk goes a long way in, in helping with that. The last one that we see is, is phishing, right? Our end users are our most vulnerable thing, and the attackers know that. So the majority of attacks that we see these days are originating with an end user. Phishing is a very pop, uh, uh, popular tactic, of course, for getting into those uh, individual end users, which then gives them access into your network proper. We address this with what we call managed security awareness. And this is an end user education platform that we've developed in-house um, that provides, uh, I think, usable end user security training, and it does so in a way that it doesn't impact your actual end users' lives. It's not a four-hour session every January where it's just simply for a checkbox for compliance. This is a bi-weekly email link, so there's no portal or password or usernames for this even for your end users, that delivers a three to five minute micro learning session which is designed specifically to kind of promote memory retention of what they just learned. We're developing relevant content in-house that aligns to any end user, not just those that are kind of tech savvy, but Colonial Pipeline is a great example. We have a training module, of course, that we deployed that related to that. It doesn't matter how techy you are. You heard of the Colonial Pipeline breach from any news channel. Uh, maybe you got worried, maybe you waited in line for gas, but by delivering them in this way, it's not impacting their day-to-day, -day, which means they're actually going to be doing it. It's three to five minutes long, bi-weekly. Everyone has time for that. And what we found is, that <laughs> is it increases the overall security culture for that individual, which then impacts directly your security posture as a company. Um, this also does automated phishing sims, so you can get a, a handle on those end users that maybe need some additional uh, reinforcement. 
And all three of these things that we've just talked about, guys, are managed fully by the concierge security team that I had mentioned. So it's the same two individuals having this very granular level of insight into your environment, and they can leverage all that information in different ways from a strategic guidance standpoint, helping you guys continuously improve your security posture. Um, and like I said, although it does sound corny, it's extremely true here, becoming an extension of your IT team. And what all these three things do is align to forms of frameworks. So NIST being probably the one all of us have heard of on this call, but all three of these platforms combined are directly aligning and, and satisfying the majority of the NIST controls that relate specifically to cybersecurity. I'll shut up for a second, isn't it? Well, actually we'll do questions over chat, so I, I won't shut up, I will keep going. So the last thing is just a, a quick example of a ransomware attack that came into our SOC. So this is an actual example. And what we did uh, from a remediation standpoint, how long it took, those types of things. Um, we have a very proper slide for this, but it's extremely difficult to tell a story with it. So I made it fun. So 5.23 a.m., you're probably sleeping, at least I am. Maybe you're up, but you're, you're probably not completely at your desk yet. You're not 100% you know, caffeinated, those types of things. So at 5.23 a.m., we saw uh, that uh, AD was being logged in from multiple systems for the same end user. Um, which is typically a clear indicator that something's undergoing a brute force type attack. At 526, there was outbound CNC traffic uh, that we saw from an internal server um, using PowerShell. Uh, so three minutes now have gone by. Within five minutes, we escalated this into what we call an urgent status. So this would be a P0 type of an event where, you know, all hands on deck. Uh, we're using all of our resources internally at Arctic Wolf, understanding what the threat is, developing that guided remediation plan, et cetera. Um, we correlated all this traffic back to PowerShell Empire, which is a known, a known tool uh, to infiltrate, you know, different levels of a customer environment. So six minutes from the breach, uh, a true positive has now been confirmed by Arctic Wolf. Uh, we do understand that this is a legitimate threat, and this is being done by humans, guys. We do leverage AI and ML at certain steps within our observation pipeline, but ultimately, if something is being brought to your attention, it has been vetted by humans, um, which I think is a really important distinction. Uh, in how we're, we're qualifying all of these threats, which for you minimizes the amount of noise. And that's one of the things that we're solving for as well. There is no alert fatigue with Arctic Wolf because we're doing all of that essentially for you. So compromised location and, and user data combed. So we're, we're understanding exactly what the scope of this breach happened to be. And within 25 minutes, so now it's 540, uh, 5.48 a.m., um, we contained this particular endpoint. We do have the ability to remotely quarantine, if you will, any endpoint within a customer environment to mitigate the potential spread of said threat. Um, worked with the customer, uh, looked at their, their AV scan logs, gave customers recommendations on how to remediate this, um, and finally gave them the, the, the Chuck Norris thumbs up that they were good to go. So whatever the fix for this happened to be, it could have just been a simple password reset. Um, to make sure that, you know, that attack couldn't happen again, you know, the credentials have been changed, all of those types of things. Um, but that was it. So start to finish for a full ransomware attack that, that had, you know, some power behind it. They were in there with PowerShell Empire, uh, was five minutes to detect it um, and 50 minutes to solve for it completely um, at 5.28 a.m. Uh, on a weekday. So those are the type of impacts and business outcomes that we're providing back to our customers. And, and frankly, that's what we're really all about. Like I said, we're not a, we're not a widget or a tool um, this is very much the white glove managed service that has the ability to have visibility across your entire environment. Like I said, network, endpoint, cloud, uh, do the correlations, but at the same time, work very intimately with our customers in developing that partnership um, and a full understanding and making your security posture as good as it possibly can be. And I think that was it. And I actually finished four minutes early, which for me is actually is really good. So I'm, I'm done. I don't know if any questions came in or if anybody has any feedback, feel free.